When we do the comparative analysis of the nerve injuries in the hand, we'll be discussing three cases, medial nerve injury, ulnar nerve injury, or the radial nerve injury. If it is a case of medial nerve injury, the patient will present with hand of benediction. Whereas in case of ulnar nerve injury, there'll be claw hand deformity, especially affecting the medial two fingers. And if it is a radial nerve injury case, patient will present with a rest drop. So in the first look, you can tell which of the three nerves have been compromised. Let us look at a diagram and repeat this information again. So these are the three patients we were talking about and just while looking at them, you can mention in the first patient, there is ulnar claw hand. So it is injury of ulnar nerve here leading to claw hand deformity. Whereas in the second patient, as is evident, this is what we call as the hand of benediction. And this must be a case of median nerve injury. And what about the third patient? The third patient is a case of loss of wrist extension, the wrist drop and must be injury to the radial nerve. But then there can be some confusion. Like here we are looking at these two diagrams, they are appearing the same, almost same. How do you know this is a nerve, nerve injury and this is median nerve injury? Because you have to understand for this kind of presentation, you have to tell the patient to make a fist and then this deformity will appear whereas in ulnar claw hand this deformity is always existing and why because when there is ulnar nerve injury we understand that lumbricals to these fingers have been compromised that is why the flexion at mcp and extension at ip is a problem now one group of muscle is paralyzed the other group is more powerful the flexor digitorum profundus will be pulling the finger into flexion deformity whereas extensor digitorum in the posterior forearm will pull the mcp joint into hyperextension, ulnar claw hand deformity and it is persisting all the time as compared with the hand of benediction here you have to tell the patient make a fist and while making a fist you'll find these two fingers they are able to fold because the medial half of flexor distrum profunda supplied by ulnar nerve is still working problem is with the median nerve and if you want to fold these fingers you need lateral half of flexor distrum profundus and flexor pollicis longus for folding the thumb but they need median nerve if there is a median nerve injury at a higher level, the flexor distrum profundus towards the lateral side and flexor pulses longus, they are not working. So these fingers find difficulty in folding, especially the index finger finds difficulty in folding, pointing index. Okay, fine. But still, when somebody gave me these two diagrams, how can I immediately tell this is a lar nerve injury and this is median nerve injury because they are appearing the same. One difference. What you find here is in a lar claw hand, there is hyper extension at the metacarpophalangeal joint, which you will not find in a case of median nerve injury. So that is one major difference you can see. If MCP joint is in hyperextension, goes more in favor of ulnar claw hand. And if that is missing, it goes more in favor of the median nerve injury. And of course, wrist drop, loss of wrist extension, muscles like ECRL may not be working, radial nerve injury, evident immediately.